It's open source hardware time. It Let's is. Hardware. We are doing open source hardware. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to talk about is we did a post about Arduino. So you remember we had the top 10 posts of the decade? You mean had, like that was like two minutes ago? Yeah. Remember we did like, that? Yeah. Yeah. I so uh, you've been contributing to Arduino for about a decade. Well, at least because the Eagle CAD <laughs> that at I least. posted is 10 and, years ago. And, and I'll, I'll say this because I'm a user of the libraries. I, I don't write Arduino libraries, but I use them. Yeah. Um, and the information that we have is we're the number one downloaded library libraries in, in Arduino. Yeah, NeoPixel and DHT are like... And the number, and the number one provider of... And yes, we have the most libraries. Yeah, and so I wrote like three this weekend. And so, why do we do this? Why? Well, I don't know. Man. Because we want to help people learn how to code, do projects, and everything. Oh yeah, that's right. So every year we take a look at what's going on in the world of microcontrollers. Uh, obviously, Circuit Python. Um, we have our blog post coming out soon, where we're like telling the community, um, please let us know what you want, and here's some ideas that we have. Yeah. But we also try to do this with Arduino because everybody's using our stuff, and we're like, here's what we think we could do, and then we listen to our customers. And we listen to people at events, and we listen to the community. And so here's our list that we kind of keep track throughout the year. There's some stuff that we're working on, some stuff that it's not just helpful for us, um, and some of it isn't. It'd be helpful for the community. So okay. here's the things that we came up with that would be cool to see in 2020. Uh, download stats from Arduino for community and developers. This one, they said they're going to do it at Arduino Day. There's Arduino libraries.info. It's an attempt. but. Arduino actually has all the data. So when you make a library, Arduino has a copy on their servers and they know all the stats. Okay. They've 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 told everyone they have these stats at the event that they did. The reason this is really helpful yeah, for they, me. Yeah, they they showed this screenshot of it, but they said they were yeah. going to post this stuff up. We actually need this. Uh, yeah, because yeah. I have to do like library management and deprecation and it would be really helpful to know which libraries people I mean, there's the total downloads, but if I can tell which ones are being downloaded and how yeah. often that will help me know if it's okay for me to deprecate or if I have to, if I can rename it. Like it, uh, we do this with CircuitPython because we have a lot of stats and details on it. Yeah. I don't have that for Arduino. So right now I'm kind of working blind. I'm like, well, I'm going to change this library and I just really hope a lot of people aren't yeah. using it, but I don't so know. So this is back in March um, and I took a screenshot from the video because that was the only way to get this. And they said they were going to do it in a couple weeks or something. It's now, of course, longer than that, from March of last year. But it would be really nice to have this, I think, for the people who maintain libraries, who are making libraries, to know what to work on and what to work on. Um, they do share some stats sometimes. Yeah. So they have form users and like number of people on Facebook. But um, the, the, the library stats that they said they were going to release would be really helpful. OK, we'll see. Really Hopefully yeah. sometime this year. OK, next up, uh, tiny USB support in Arduino core. So We added this to our Arduino core. We did. So we know it's possible. And the reason this would be really cool is that they did a recent like chainsaw project where the logic of Arduino was separated from the hardware support, which is totally awesome and great. Um, and the next step of that would be if we could, I know we have like pluggable USB, but pluggable USB, like I've, we've tried to use it a couple times to extend it and it's been very challenging. Whereas Tina USB is a little bit more comprehensive and having that be part of the chainsaw project where you can use Tina USB as your default USB peripheral would mean that you would have the same consistent USB interface across all chipsets. And I think we're at the point now where everything has USB, um, just like we have like, you know, generic BLE, I think having a generic USB interface would be really helpful as more and more chips get hardware support in the Arduino IDE. Okay. Next up. Oh, well, actually I'll say this. So um, what we've seen now is when there's new hardware platforms, what people are able to do instantly and easily is get teeny USB on there, and they're able to do more Because that's faster. the hardest part of doing yeah. a port is the USB so, support by far. So with um, FOMU and some of these uh, small devices that yeah. are like teaching people FPGA with open tool chains, or things like the NXP chip line, or whatever it is now, especially looking at what people are doing at conferences with badges, this is the first thing. If you get that in there, then you get so much more. So that'd be, I think that'd be helpful for Arduino. Um, specifically for the community who, if Arduino wants community contributions, this would be a way to do it. Um, next up, you have two bootloader support from Arduino. Yes. So one of the reasons that we have... This is kind of paired with yeah, TNUSB. It's very similar. It's, it's a common bootloader 
that we use, and again, what's nice about this is it's one bootloader that's imported to multiple different processors. Um, so we have it for the SAMD21, the SAMD51, the STM32, the Nordic NRF52840, you know, there's, it also exists for like Linux, you know, Cypress, some other chipsets. We have LPC support, NXP support. So the, um, what's nice about UF2 is it's one standard for bootloading, which again makes easier to like, you know, do bootloading. And also, not only does it have a DFU, HID, or CDC mode, it also has a mass storage mode. And this is really great for kids who don't have a way to install a driver on a computer. Like for example, if you have a Chromebook, yeah, you can sometimes install like AVR Girl and, and code through that, but sometimes you have like an Android tablet and there's no way for you to install software other than with mass storage. Like even iOS, you can do mass storage. And it also lets you take backups. So right now it's like if you want, if you have an Arduino Uno and you want to take a backup of the firmware, you have to like install AVR Dune, and you have to learn how to use it and you have to like type this arcane thing into the command line and we have tutorials on it and it's, it's not bad. Um, but it would be really great if you could just drag and drop it. And this makes distribution of firmware and software really easy. One example that I think kind of hit home yeah. was Bill from AT Makers said, look, I'm distributing assistive technology firmware updates. They're not going to download the Arduino IDE and change thinking something in a script and then hit compile and download it and wait. He just ships them a file yeah. over email. They double click. The little board, it goes in the, the USB mode where you just drag and drop USB, the uh, UF2 bootloader, yeah. and they're done. Yeah. So, like, that... It's great. I do a fifth distribution, too. Like, when we're doing debugging, yeah. and people are like, how do I test my hardware? I'm like, oh, here's the testing UF2. Yeah. Drag and drop it, because if you give them, if you tell them to go and compile something, now you're adding the complexity of the tool chain and the compiling and what libraries they have. Whereas I give them a UF2, it's like, yeah. I guarantee that they'll install it right, and I guarantee that it's going to be the right... Software. So I think this is another example. If Arduino wants to expand their ecosystem, contributors and developers... It's already done. It's already done. We've already written this. We're saying okay. we would just think it would be great if it was used. Arduino library standards and automation. Yeah, this is actually something that um, the Arduino team has started, and I think it's an excellent start. Um, a year ago about, we did our automation tools for um, using Travis CI with Arduino libraries. It's been really helpful. So the, the challenge now is that there are so many chipsets that support Arduino. And it's nearly impossible to know if your library or code is going to run on all of them. And so like, you know, we have like 250 different Arduino libraries, um, you know, and then once in a while, like ESP8266 will change something, or maybe there's like a new, you know, Arduino 33 IoT, whatever, there's some new platform. You wanna make sure that everything at least compiles. So um, Arduino now has an actions sketch for compilation, which is very good. What I would like is to have some sort of like standards that people can attempt to achieve for library style and um, like examples and distribution. Because right now I don't, like nobody really knows what is expected when you write example code or libraries. Everyone's kind of on their own, which is fine. It means it's, we have a lot of creativity and it's kind of like the wild west. Um, but I also see a lot of libraries, I also get a lot of pull requests from people who are making like really bad decisions that I'm like, oh, I know it's going to happen. If we, if we accept this pull request, everything is going to break. And like, n there's no way to explain to them like, no, this isn't how it's done. We don't, you know, pass things by reference or we don't use pointers in that way in Arduino um, because there's like no place to point them. So it would be neat if there was... Um, in addition to the Action CI, maybe some more scripts that people could do to, um, you know, like a, a C language or C++ language, like, uh, style check. You know, like, you, I've seen these for, like, you know, in Python there's linters, yeah. and I know that CLang has a bunch of testers that can do, but, like, letting you know, like, hey, by the way, like, you don't check that this pointer is null before you do something. I think it will really cut down on p problems. Like, you know, the, a lot of libraries are golden path. I think it would help avoid this golden path problem where if people do something even a little bit different, um, things fall apart. Okay, well, speaking of, next one. Uniform transfer of structured data. Um, so we bumped into this because we were just writing so many libraries and we were just copying and pasting the same SPI, I squared C, and UART interface code to just like send and receive a buffer. Um, 
these are really stabilized. I think, you know, maybe when Arduino was starting 10 years ago, like it was kind of like, well, you know, we don't know exactly what people want with I squared C or U or SPI. I, at this point, I think it's really stabilized. And I think having a default Arduino includable library that has a standard of like, I want to write and read an SM bus. I want to transmit a buffer on SPI um, and have it be like very compact and again, abstract it away, it doesn't have to be a thick abstraction layer, but just enough that if and when things do change in the Arduino API, and they do sometimes change, I mean, a couple of years ago, whatever, we had SPI transactions, right? That's a really great thing that we added. Um, we might eventually have I squared C transactions. We might change the I squared C underlying layer, but instead of doing a buffering style to maybe being a more streaming style. Um, if there was an abstraction layer, I think that would be good. I've made tons of mistakes in, in our libraries, and one of the reasons is what we, why we wrote this abstraction layer is to try to avoid me making the same mistakes. Um, but I think it would help other people as well, because I've, I've seen so many libraries where I'm like, oh man, like your, your library is not going to work you know, if it's a uh, you know, repeating starter or non-repeating starter. You don't check this return value, and you really should, because if you, know, you don't have a pull up, it's not gonna work. So stuff like that, I think, would be good is, you know, again, we have a library. People can use it if they want to. I'm using it. Yeah. But if there's an official one, I think that would be even better. I was talking to someone in the open source hardware community, and um, I'll just, you know, summarize briefly. So yeah. we're in a weird position where, so you have a lot of knowledge on what can help out Arduino the most, and we're in a position to talk about it like, I write community. so much code. I write and, so much code. And, <laughs> and we have a platform to get this out there. But I think because of the way electronic companies compete more now, yeah. there's not as much community. If you make a board and I make a board, you know, it, it, it's harder for companies to interact together. Communities, like, you can kind of do stuff in GitHub a little bit. But I think this so this is our attempt where, like, this information, we like, this is, these are good ideas. And, like, yes, it would help us, but it also help everybody else. So... I think that's the dilemma with some of this stuff. And speaking of, so there's a connector that everyone's using on hardware now. It's Grove, it's Stemma, it's... Quick. Quick. Yeah. So this has been going on for because a while. Because all the sensors have, have, again, they've all stabilized to I squared C. Like it yeah. used to be like, you get sensors that can be a variety of things, but you know what? In the last like five years, everything's now I squared so C. So Sparkman has Quick. Yeah. Seed has Grove. We have Stemma and Stemma QT. There's a gravity. There's a couple others. TF Robot has gravity. We made Stemma octopus. try to be the most compatible with everything. Yeah. But there's an Arduino MKR board, and there's something that kind of looks like this, but it isn't compatible with these. Yeah. It, it, so here's the thing. It actually doesn't matter to me, because all of our quick boards have level shifting on them and regulators, and that's just my style. But I know that the SparkFun quick boards don't. And so I'm worried that people are going to try to plug, you know, quick boards into the MKR. I mean, it's not a perfect connector, but we're not a cable. And if you used it um, and you didn't realize it's five volt output, then it wouldn't level shift. It, it doesn't level shift the I squared C from five volt down to three. And the output voltage is five volts. So if you try to power something directly and most sensors are three volts, it wouldn't work. So it, I think if everyone could either decide, like, look, it's going to be three volt power, three volt logic, great, or five volt logic and we have level shifting, great. But I think having something that's neither, um, it's just risky because people, there's just so many Grove sensors out there and there's so many quick sensors out there that I want to, I'm, I'm trying to say, like, everybody, let's, let's try to get closer together. And the maker boards are the only boards that are, don't match yeah. this exact voltage specification where it, there's a risk that they could plug five volts into a sensor or they have something with a regulator, but then the pull-ups go too high and, and could freak out the I squared C port. So, so it would be nice. This is our attempt of trying, like, hey, everybody, if we do this, it'll get better for everyone. I think, and, um, and I think more Our stuff would, is fine. That's why yeah. like, it doesn't matter what anyone doesn't does. Like, we're going to do the best thing for our customers and for the community, but we see an opportunity for if you decide to buy something from SparkFun or something from Arduino, those things will work together i think it would be great if there's more compatible we, i i try really hard to stay compatible with as many things as possible yeah. because i don't i don't believe that an ecosystem works if it's if it's everybody has their own little islands yeah um so but that's my again it, it's i don't care personally but i think it would be great 
for the community if this was true. So the, the other thing is we said, hey, send us your comments. So um, on this page here, um, this is what someone pointed out and uh, we got a few emails. If Arduino used the feather format, which the maker kind of looks like it, has a, you know, a, a Stemma-like port on it. So we didn't put this in our list. And the reason is, I think it's a little self-serving if it comes from us. Like, yeah, there's, there's a ton of feathers. There's feather wing took off. There's the wing contest that we just talked about with Hackaday. Um, Sparkfun does feather wings. Seed has feather wings. Particle does feather wings. All the electronic manufacturers pretty much do feather wings now. Um, component manufacturers, they do wings. Um, remember how shields worked out for Arduino and there was an ecosystem and a lot of people made shields? This is where it went. This isn't like, ooh, 2020 predictions. This is what it is. Um, but I understand us saying it's like, well, of course Adafruit wants, wants to have uh, the wing standard. Um, we did an open standard. We get no money for this. It's If you make it that shape, we just did a good spec. And that's why people used it. Um, not because of any other reason. <laughs> Trust me. It's a good spec. That's it's why. It's an open spec. You yeah, go it's a, ahead. It's a good it. open spec. Have um, fun. Other requests that came in um, in the comments and people who chatted with us, um, other languages, Go and Python. For I Arduino. think that's, diff that's, that's kind of outside that, the, yeah. the realm. So that's our thing. I'm going to um, turn this into a little short video, put it on that post. Yeah. And like that's those are our ideas for 2020. Arduino, uh, let us know if you're interested in any of these things. We did a lot of them. Or, and if, or, we're doing or them. if there's something that you would like us to do. Yeah. Let us know. Let us know. Let me know. Like what I, I write, I wrote code all through Christmas break. All I did was write Arduino libraries. It was a nonstop Arduino library yes. party. This is mostly my um, life watching Lamore like, hey, still working on that Arduino and thing? They're still working on it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and writing, working on this action stuff and, and CI and trying to do a lot of integration yeah. with our libraries and, and maintaining the 250 libraries. But maybe there's other stuff that, you know, if y'all yeah. want help adding TeenUSB, I'd love to help get that added. And It'd I'll be say so this, helpful. I'll say this too, because I think we're just one voice that tries to collect the feedback from the community and more. We have the show, we have blog posts. Yeah. But if you're on Twitter, at Arduino, say you want Featherwings, say you want the, any of these things. That way they hear that it's not just like crazy Phil and Lamar coming up with crazy stuff. Um, let them know, because Arduino is a community um, that's what it was built on, is a community. It's open source. That's how we all got here. Yeah. And I wrote the article a long time ago, why Arduino One was here to say, doing things Arduino-like is the way electronics are going to get done. And that's helped us figure out what we want to do at CircuitPython. So anyways, right, let so them know. That's that blog post. Okay. <laughs>